Hi, this is Meredith from Beetalon, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful and meaningful memento, a wire lettering hanger. You can download the template for Bride from the Beetalon.com website. You can make your own template for any word or letters that you'd like to make. After you've printed out the template from the Beetalon.com website, go ahead and lay it out on the grid of the really big jig. The really big jig is the perfect tool for doing this project because it gives you the space to write a full word that will be the width of a hanger. To get started, I like to use the top dot from the D and the two bottom hearts to line up my design on the jig. So using a beading awl, I'm going to find where the hole is that will line up with that dot, poke the hole in the paper, and then use one of the pegs that has come with the jig to hold it in place. Next, I'll do the same with the heart. So I'll find a hole where that lines up, punch the hole in, take a peg, and secure it in place. Last, I'll come over and do this hole. Now I'm ready to poke all of the holes and put my pins in. Now, sometimes you'll find on your peg that your hole won't be quite where it needs to be. What you'll do is you'll find the hole that is the closest to that hole and put your peg there. Now I will poke all of the holes and place all of the pegs along the lettering in preparation to wrap my wire. If it's easier, you can poke all of the holes at once and then put the pegs in, or you can poke and peg as you go. So I can already tell I don't like where I made the hole for this peg, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a new hole for it and move that peg over. If the peg does not go into the hole as easily as you'd like, you can use a bent chain nose pliers to hold the peg and gently place it in the hole. The really big jig comes with 50 pegs, and 50 pegs will get you to about this point. Now, you have another option for adding pegs by using the extra peg set that comes with the 3D bracelet jig, or you can start your wire wrapping, then when you get to this part, take the pegs from over here and move them over there. In this video, I'm going to use extra pegs to complete the whole design. All right, now that I have all of my pegs in, I'm going to take a look and see if I like where they're all placed. You can see that some of them are spot on and a couple of them I actually decided I wanted to put them in different places. I think that I want to move these two over to give a little bit more room between my R and my I. So I'll just go ahead and move this one over here. I'm going to move this one over here as well template is a guide and you can use it exactly or you can switch it around a little bit. When I wire wrap with the really big jig, I find that it is easiest to stand over the jig. That gives me the most amount of control over where the wire goes. To get started, I'll leave about 8 inches of slack because that is the part that we're going to wrap around the beginning of the wire to secure our word in place. Leaving those eight inches, I'll pull out a length of wire and start wrapping. I wanna make sure that that wire is as tight as possible around those pegs. And any imperfection or small bump I can work on later on when I'm doing all of the finishing.
So now I have finished wrapping my wire and I'm going to leave that same 8 inch length of wire on the other side of the design. Now I'm just looking to see where there are some spots on my design that need a little bit of attention. I'm going to go with my bent chinos plier and just kind of push everything down. And this starts the process of work hardening the wire, but mostly it's just making sure that all of those bends are nice and tight. Now I'm ready to lift this off of the jig. I can use my fingers or, again, using that bent chinos plier, you can just slide it underneath the wire to gently lift it up. Now here you can do a number of different things. You can leave it as it is. You can hammer it out to work harden it and texture it. You can use 24 or 26 gauge artistic wire to wrap the joints together for a little bit more strength. Embellish it with beads or with wire. Really, your creativity is your only limitation. Once you're ready to attach your wire lettering design to the hanger, you will lay it down. Make sure that it is centered or where you'd like it to be attached. And I think I'd like mine to be right and plain there. So what I'll do is I will take some chain nose pliers and make a 90 degree bend so that the bend will meet up with the part of the hanger that I would like to attach my wire to. Because I want the bride to be right on plane with the bottom of the hanger, I'm going to stand the hanger up and use that as my guide for where I want this wire wrapped around. Now that I have that bent, I can pick it up and continue a nice tight bend around the hanger. I'll go around three times and then come back here and tuck that end down. Now it's a little rough here, so what I'd like to do is come in with my wire cutters and cut that on an angle. And what I could even do, this feels nice and smooth, but you could use a file to file that down very, very gently just to make it even smoother. Next we'll come over and do the same thing on the other side. And there I've done three wraps to match my other side come on the back and, and now any parts that I want to fix or change I can come in with my pliers or my fingers and kind of move things around to how I want them. And this is also when you can come in and decide how you want to embellish your wire lettered hanger. There are several places on the design where you can do a little bit of wire wrapping to add some structure and some embellishment. I like to wrap with 24 gauge wire, but you could use 22 gauge wire as well. And today I'll be using the 24 gauge artistic wire in champagne as a contrasting color. and I'll use my bent chain nose pliers to get a nice tight wrap here. The last thing that I want to do is to make a little heart charm to hang from the hanger. To do that, I'm going to attach a pinch bail to a heart drop and I'm going to use the beetle on pinch bail pliers. Gently squeeze the pinch bail together with the pliers so that both of the ends 
go into the top of that bead. Now I'm going to use some beetle on chain. And cut a length so that on my hanger it hangs down right about here. You'll want to use your hanger as a guide for how long you want to cut your chain. To attach the charm to the chain, open a jump ring, thread the chain onto the jump ring, then thread the top of the pinch bail onto the jump ring, and close the jump ring. Now you can hang that chain the top of the hanger.